Okay, so today we have K7000 number four in the Reparathon series of five. The fifth one's going to be quite the ordeal, and we'll get to that when we get to it. But this is complete, and it doesn't appear to have been reworked in any way, shape, or form, except someone has replaced the contrast pot. Otherwise, this does not appear to have been touched at all. Uh, original caps, uh, there's no replaced components that I can see. The flyback is original. The bottom doesn't have any signs of rework at all. I think no one has touched this in any way, shape, or form until I have received it here in my hands right here. But there are a couple of issues. Going over this, looking at things, I've gone through and tested all the components, and everything tests fine. I've got a bajillion videos on what to test and how to test all the stuff on the K7000. So because this looked so original and didn't show any signs of any problems, uh, the fuse was intact, all that, I went ahead and checked everything you normally check off camera, and I found no anomalies except for, I believe, three things. Uh, we have a cracked solder joint on the sink header pin right there. I don't know if we can get in there closer. Yep, right there. The, we got a cracked sink header pin for the input. We have a broken pad here, right there, or lifted pad on this film cap here. We've got this lifted leg or lifted trace, but that isn't really a, a, a big problem. That's issue number two. Uh, and then issue number three is, of course, the burned up and bad oxidized pads and joints for R89 and R101, which is very common. However, we did have continuity across the pads and the traces and everything in the, the components checked out for inspect the way they should be. That's about all I found. So other than those three issues and the contrast pot having been changed out, this appears to be completely, totally original. Uh, the flyback is cracked across the face here, but that's completely common, and uh, it's not an, not an actual problem. You can see that it's cracked across here, and it's cracked across here. Right on top of the focus pot is a crack across there, and a I'm sorry, focus pot here and screen pot there. But that's absolutely common for these. That is not indicative of needing, needing to replace the flyback because the high voltage area back here where all the windings are is separated from the casing from the front. So there's a potting compound in here that separates this area from this area and insulates it. So just because there's cracks across here doesn't mean the high voltage can escape out of here. It, it might, but in my experience, whenever the flyback is arcing to the frame, it's always on the side over here or on the top. So if I have one of these black knob flyback that's factory that's that's cracked if it's working I don't touch it so I want to put that out there the, otherwise uh, this is in very good shape now I did clean this in the sink and wipe it all off and do all the cleaning process I did before after that I inspected it everything tested fine all the power components all the traces uh, nothing tested out of spec or shorted or bad or anything and the fact that it was clean, I went ahead and uh, turned it on and tested it, and it works. It turned on fine, works perfectly, no problems, except the image is way too wide. Like, if you have this is the edge of the raster and this is the edge of the raster on a normal screen, uh, it's about one inch out this way. So it's about one inch too wide on each side. And I adjusted the horizontal uh, width coil completely all the way down. Originally, it was about two inches too wide. And I adjusted the horizontal width coil all the way down, and it came into about right here, but it still needs to come into about right there. So the image is too wide. Now the width cap, the C38 width cap, is the original factory 0.394. So I thought, hmm, okay, that's interesting. Uh, I know in the past that uh, if your image is too wide or it's too narrow, you could have the wrong width coil installed. So it's important to not overlook the width coil if you have an image too wide or too narrow. And I was testing on an actual K7000 too. Uh, and it was too wide. So I took a look at the width coil and sure enough, somebody has the wrong width coil installed in here. This is a nine alpha 2838005. And I don't even know what that's supposed to be in because the K7000 is supposed to have a dash 001 or a 001 alpha. And I believe the K7400 and K7500 use a dash 002 and the U2000, U5000 use a dash 003. Now, it could be backwards on that. I can't say for sure, but I don't even know what 005 is supposed to be in. I did some research and couldn't find anything that links to a 005. 
So I just happen to have a 001 here, right there, and you can see that if we look at this, there the windings kind of stop right here. There, this whole area here doesn't have any more windings. There is one, it goes like, you know, winding, 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 and then it stops and goes down here. And this whole section here is one winding less than up here. But if we look at this one, it's all one big long winding. So there's a whole bunch of extra windings on this one that aren't on the 001. So that creates a difference in inductance, which will affect the width of the image. So we need to remove this one and put in a 001. Now, what's interesting is that there's no evidence of this ever being changed out. If we look at this, unless somebody did a really good job cleaning this up, this doesn't have any evidence in any way, shape, or form of it ever being replaced in the past. So this is a bit of a mystery, but uh, the image is, uh, uh, you know, the image is off center, off the sides, I should say, by about one inch, and I can't bring it in anymore. I don't. I can fix that by changing out the width cap to a. Uh, Let's see, the higher you go, the narrower the image. The lower you go, the wider the image. So I need to raise this uh, to like a 0.564, and that would probably fix the problem, but I don't want to do that because this has the, the wrong width coil in it. It should be a 001 or a 001 alpha. Since I have a 001, we're just going to take this out and put this one in there, and that'll likely fix our width problem. Uh, that's about all this needs. I can, I can do a reflow and a recap and change that width coil out. That's about all that's going to have to be done with this, because it does operate and work, and the only issue is the extra width. Um, it does say H collapse on the side here, H collapse, but when I tested it, it did not have H collapse, so I think whoever wrote this on the side probably uh, had a bad, a, a, bad a, uh, a yoke, probably an open winding on their yoke because they wrote each collapse on here but uh, all I did was take this out of the box that it was sent into me sent to me in cleaned it and tested it and it works just fine full perfect image except it's just too wide so uh, I am going to cap this reflow it uh, not necessarily in that order and then we'll test it and see if it's the width is fixed oh and change it out sorry test it and see if uh, we have a good full image now with the proper width but there is one more thing I have to do. Uh, just like I believe uh, number two in the Repair-a-thon series here, uh, look at the pots on the neck board. They are all heavily corroded. They're also they are so corroded that when I tried to adjust them, I just snapped the ear off. I tried to adjust this one, the ear snapped right off, and I didn't bother trying to adjust the rest of them. They're all frozen solid in place because of all this rust on here. So I have to change those out. And I just happen to have, doo -doo -doo, uh, I just happen to have, let's see, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, something like that, uh, of the, of the, I don't know which one of these are which here. Um, here we go. I have, uh, I think the cutoffs are 200 ohm and the drives are 2k ohm. I could have those backwards, but I've got the 2k ohm and the 200 ohm pots, so we can change those out. Uh, I forgot to mention those until just now, so we got to get that done as well. So I guess technically there were four issues, but uh, yeah, we need to do that. So I'll get that done too. Uh, I think what I'll do is, uh, since you know, I don't. It's nice to have a quick, easy fix for once. So I think what we'll do is I'm just going to probably just do one long time lapse and film myself doing the cap and the reflow and changing the pots out and changing this out. And then we'll turn it on and see what it does. So, um, yeah, I think let's do this in real time. Let's fix R101 and R89 in real time. Then we'll do the full reflow and the cap kit and everything and change that with coil out in the time lapse. So. When it comes to this, uh, R101 and R89 are the two that you must always inspect and test. So I like to get rid of the original solder that's on here. And if it doesn't need scraped, you don't have to scrape it. But I want to do that anyway. And by scrape it, I mean use the fiberglass pen on these joints. Uh, it doesn't look like R89 is going to need that but I'm going to remove the existing solder and I'm going to flow new solder on R89 and R101 because it's absolutely something that you need to do 
because they run very hot. Uh, R96 also, you might want to do as well, but this one appears to be in really good shape, so I'm not gonna mess with that too much. But these solder joints look fantastic, so I'm just gonna add new solder to R89 here. They don't look oxidized at all. I think a nice fresh reflow will make them look pretty good. And there we have it, so R89 is good. R101, this leg of R101 looks just fine. So we're going to just reflow that and I'm going to add my solder bridge here that I always do because this will add some extra surface area for the heat to flow and it will prevent it from oxidizing. There we go. I mean, that's not the most professional thing you, to do, but that will, like I say, this will add as kind of a heat sink and help prevent the pad from oxidizing and getting too hot in the future. Um, yeah, I don't think we're going to need to scrape that pad. I think that'll be fine. So let's just, this didn't, this didn't get too hot, so uh, let's do another bridge here. There we go, and I think that will work. Ah, dang it. There we go. That's better. I like the way that looks much better. Okay. All right, now let's clean that sucker up here. There we go. Uh, hmm. I think I didn't let this cool down enough. There we go. Good. All right. Well, um, I think that'll do it for that. And then uh, you want to make sure you redo R96 and R104. And you want to make sure you get D18. And I like to add a bridge across D18 here to the horizontal uh, yoke pin because these yoke pins can crack from hooking the yoke on and off and so I add a little extra across there like that. Um, these all look pretty darn good though so I mean this chassis is probably one of the better ones I've seen come across the bench as far as condition in quite a while. So with that repair work there being done uh, let's go ahead and zoom out and I guess um, I'll go ahead and just cue the time lapse and start doing the reflow. The only one that the only joints that really needed reflow from what I saw on the inspection, all the flyback header pins look or flyback pins look great. Uh, the neck board connector interconnect pins look great. The ribbon cable pins look great. This ribbon cable is notorious for having bad joints for or this point and that point. So those look, I mean everything looks great. So uh, it doesn't need too much reflow, but I'm going to go ahead and get that done. We will replace all the caps and the neck board pots and just do one big time lapse. So, yeah, all it needed reflowed was this and this, and that was really about it. So, let's get that done. Uh, I, guess we'll, I guess what I'll do is I'm going to start by removing this width coil, then we'll do the cap kit, the reflow, change these out, and uh, give it a try. So, cue the time lapse.
And there we go. Full cap kit, full reflow, neckboard rework. Everything is good to go. Here is all of the original uh, corroded and broken whatever an unadjustable neckboard pods. So we'll throw those in the garbage. And then we have this dash 005 horizontal width coil. I will not throw that away. I'll keep that for future use if we need be. And uh, yeah, it's all good, all cleaned up. As you saw, it should be ready to go. So you saw my method there. I just heat up the pads and I pull the cap out. Uh, that kind of helps prevent lifting and damaging pads from uh, leaving the iron on the pad too long, especially with the added heat of the braid. So I just make sure I grab the, the cap and heat the pad and pull the cap out and it minimizes the time that you need uh, to leave the iron on the pad. So that's about it. I got all of the neck board here all zip tied up and secure. This is our ground. We're going to have to figure out how to... Uh, I'll just attach an alligator clip to that for the DAG ground. Um, and yeah, everything else is good to go and ready. I, th I believe the drive pots were the 200 ohm and the cutoffs were the 2K if I recall correctly. So I think it's 200 and 2K, 202K, 202K. I might have those backwards, but you know, uh, obviously just consult the manual uh, or the schematic. But I think that's right. Use that uh, based off of the readings from another one here off camera. So I think we are ready. So yeah, the 001 Alpha is installed as you saw, you saw me do that. It's kind of a different footprint. Fortunately, this is one of the 7,000 that has the footprint for the larger or smaller uh, feet, depending on which coil that you use. So let me get this on the tube and we'll turn it on and see if our image is now... Actually it should be... I ran this... Uh, this was all the way down previously so I ran it up a little bit so if my hypothesis is correct originally it was like you know one inch off the screen. If my hypothesis is correct it should be roughly about here. We should have about an inch or so of, of black on each side now hopefully. Uh, so let's get on the tube, see if it works, see if I put a cap in backwards, see if something blows up, see if it's still operational, if it is, and if it is, if our image is shrunk to a proper size, and then we can raise this coil out, uh, the core out, to make it wider if we need to. So, okay, on a tube we go, let's see what happens. Okay, so I had mentioned I was testing this on an actual dedicated K7000 tube and yoke, but I had to put the original uh, 7000 back on that chassis and put, uh, back on the tube, I should say, and put it back downstairs for a different project. So we're back here on the uh, the second U5000 uh, test tube that I've got. The original one, I broke that pin off on a few videos back and, and uh, fixed that pin on the neck. So I had to retire that one, and since it's working now, I had to put an actual U5000 on it and use that and keep it for just that U5000. I can't change out chassis anymore on it because of that broken pin. So now we have a new replacement U5000 universal application type of thing here. So that's what the uh, situation is here with us sitting on this manual to uh, act as a insulator. So this is a completely compatible uh, yoke and tube set up for a 7000. So we should hopefully, A, it should turn back on and work. And then B, we want to make sure that we're not too wide. And then C, make sure we have good operation and focus and everything. And if we do, we'll leave that flyback installed. So let's see if it even turns on and operates and where we're at with the width and all that jazz. So everything is hooked up. We got anode, neck, yoke, ground, power, video, remote. So, uh, oh, hang on, I gotta turn the uh, light off on the overhead here. And there we go, all right. So, all right, here goes nothing. One, two, three. Okay, yes, it does come on. Uh, we had a little flash in the corner there. That was odd. Uh, okay. Um, well, we're still too wide. Um, and we're way out of focus, so I'll probably... Well, it's getting better as it warms up here. Yeah, it's getting better as it warms up. So let's adjust our focus a bit. i got to do it from the opposite side here. And... Ah, perfect. Right there. Fan-freaking-tastic. Focus is super sharp. Look at that. So that flyback is good. Okay. Uh, we're still a bit wide, so I want to see here. Uh, and we're a bit dark. Let's add a few credits here. 
and yeah we're still too wide way so we're not as wide as we were with this one we were like you know way too wide i think with this one in there it was like the r and the o was even off the edge and the a and the k so it was weight so changing it out from the five to the one definitely did help with the width we might have to actually still swap out the width cap because i had the same problem with the k7000 uh tube and yoke so it's not the fact that we're on a 5000 but i wonder if i can turn up my brightness here well we may have a b plus problem look see how the image is doing this that should not do that. Uh, we may have a, a voltage regulator that's not regulating properly. Uh, let's turn our contrast down and brightness up. Yeah, see how when I turn the brightness up, see what's happening here? Oh, look at that! We got the very rare game over screen. If you've never seen this game over screen, here you go. It's like one out of every 200 game overs. Uh, you get this screen, something like that. I don't know the exact numbers, but it's a, it's very rare to get this game over screen. Usually it's just the, the normal one, so... That was awesome. Okay. Yeah, the image is... When, let's check our B+, because I think we have... B+, is not accurate. Well, I say accurate. It should be stable at around 129. So I'm wondering what our B plus is. Uh, we can just simply go to, I don't know if that'll stay in there, right there. And it looks like our B plus, watch the screen here. Well, I don't know if you can see it, but it, it looks better now with the brightness up, but it, oh, it just collapsed a little bit. Yeah, it, it, it when, and then when it grew up. Oh, okay. I was hoping this would be good. I didn't notice that before, but I didn't leave it on very long. So if we go to the blue wire here on our resistor, it should be 129 volts. 127, hang on, 128. Now this, the image is on uh, Kano here and it's not moving. Let's wait and see when it changes. 128, 129, 120. Yeah, it's dropping, it's going up and down by a whole volt. 123, hold on. 127, no, that voltage regulator is not able to regulate. It should stay at about 128.9, 129 and it's dropping by over a volt, so I'll have to change out that voltage regulator, and that's the cause of our image doing this. Now watch what happens here. So it looks stable now, but it'll collapse slightly. That may be what they were referring to with H collapse, but if you watch it here as it transitions... Let's wait and see. I could probably show it better if we used the the test pattern generator. I don't know if you kind of saw it there. Oh yeah, it shrunk a little bit there. It shrunk there when the text came on the screen. It went... Yeah, it did it again and yeah, it, it kind of whoop and then whoop when the screen changes. So let me get that voltage regulator replaced and see if that issue is resolved with that. If it is, then you know what actually you know what let's see if we can uh, turn this off and let me see if it's odd that i've got two seven thousands in a row with horizontal size issues let's uh shrink this down all the way here okay that's as far down as it goes and as a matter of fact, let's leave it out a bit so I can adjust it again if need be. All right, leave it there, turn this back on. And we need to adjust our 50, 60 hertz pot. Now, that's odd because down is narrow and up is wide. How come it went wider when I went down? That's weird. If I adjust it up, well, I went both ways on this, so it's definitely the wrong uh, coil. That's not the issue. Uh, well, the issue is it's the wrong width coil. But uh, it usually you go down increases and up down in, uh, decreases and up increases. Am I backwards on that? Come on, I can't even get this stupid thing in there now. 
Well, I don't know why this isn't going in there now. There we go. Huh. Well, going up decreases it. That's weird. Oh, nope. Yeah, there's a dead spot. Okay, yeah, there's a dead spot. Uh, I'm going up with it, and you can see it's spreading out. Now I go down with it. It's going in, and then it has a dead spot. As I, if I keep going, it goes back out again. So right there is the limit of... Uh, I knew I wasn't going crazy. So, yeah, we're still way too far off the edge. So it looks like we're just going to have to change out that C38 again. Or also, I should say. I, it's odd. There's two, two 7000s in a row that have an image too wide. The previous one was due to the uh, extra width cap for the high voltage to bring the high voltage down, caught it to be too wide. I had to put a 19 inch uh, width coil in there to fix that. Um, it's odd that this thing has the wrong width coil, and but it has a factory C30. I, I'm, I'm perplexed again as to what's going on here, but I'll change out the C38 to a higher rating. The higher you go makes it narrow, the lower you go makes it wider. So. I'll go up with it to 0.564, and I will uh, replace that voltage regulator, and I'll come back and we'll see if it's any better. Okay, got the voltage regulator replaced, uh, and out of force of habit, I accidentally threw the old one in the garbage. I'm not going to go dumpster diving in the garbage to find the old one and show it to you, but the old one is removed, new one's replaced. I also put a 0.564 C38 installed there in place of the 0.39 which is the original one and uh, let's turn this on and see if our voltage is more stable and if we have good width now and find out I actually need to turn this light back off because I had to turn it on to see what I was doing okay all right so here we go one two three okay comes on nice good high voltage and tripping over boxes hey perfect look at that fantastic so, we uh, fixed the width problem by putting a 0.564 in place of the 0.394, and our voltage, I'd, I'd like it to be a bit more stable. We're 129.0, 128, and it's fluctuating by a single a tenth of a volt. And let's, as the screen transitions here, 129.1, so it's solid there. That's more like, 129 is what I would expect to see. So let's actually see if we can set this up here and watch it as the screen changes. Let's get that, 129.1, 128.6, that's 0.5, 0.2, yeah, I mean, I'm not 100% positive the original one was faulty. However, you'll notice here the screen no longer no longer shrinks or ink or shrinks or goes. Yeah, so I mean, that what you saw there was normal before it was it was collapsing and then re. Uh, or it was collapsing and uncollapsing real quick as the screen transitioned. Now it's not doing that. See, that was normal there. So that, that uh, voltage regulator may not have been completely bad, but I think it was not quite perfect. But the important thing here is that after changing out that 0.394 to 0.564 and putting the correct uh, point, or, uh, dash 001, I've been working on, working on this too long, uh, with the coil in there uh, and the rebuild, it's looking and working fantastic. Now, what's interesting is is how good this looks. The colors look fantastic, and every single one of these pots are dead center. When I saw, and I don't know if you saw or noticed in the uh, time lapse there, but when I put all these new pots in there, I put all of them to dead center. They're all dead center, and this looks perfect. Colors are fantastic. So. Uh, but uh, yeah, again, this is a tube that was out of a, a commercial television that I swapped into this frame here. So um, yeah, this looks fantastic. And we should not get any uh, collapse or anything when this, yeah, perfect, fantastic. And we're at 128.9 and it's stop 129. Okay, uh, I'm confident that other voltage regulator was on the cusp of dying. 
Uh, we changed the width cap out and the width coil and the rebuild and the reflow and the adjustment. I mean, really good focus. It's staying that way. Uh, it's right where it should be on the adjustment range for the focus. So that flyback is good. I'm not going to change that out. And it's working and looking fantastic. So I'll count this one as done. And yeah, review is complete. Everything's working and done. Um, heat sinks nice and cool. So yeah, I think we're good to go. So again, uh, we are four for four on this repair-a-thon of five. The last one here is going to be a doozy because it's missing the C36 and C69. Uh, it looks like it had the uh, P612 daughter board there, like this one for the pincushion mod, uh, which is what I think that is. Um, it's missing the fuse, it's got no flyback. Uh, the H hold pod is destroyed. It's missing the neck board. There's actually there's no neck board. It's missing the Remote pot or I'm sorry remote board as well. It's missing the entire remote board, but I have some of those That's not going to be a big deal and uh, I received a little sneak peek here. I received some replacement K7000 neck boards uh, the CR23 version and the CR31 version for the skinny neck. So we have the skinny neck and the fat neck uh, neck boards and I ordered some replacement parts to stuff these. I'm waiting on the skinny neck uh, socket and all these other parts I ordered. So once I get all the parts and we're going to stuff and use, uh, this is a 20, this is a uh, 25 inch K7000 so we'll have to use the uh, CR25 fat neck board. But I ordered all the parts to get going on these and we're going to stuff these and test these out. And if they work, uh, then Peter will begin selling the K7000 neck boards on his website. So that'll be a good update, so stay tuned for that. But for this one, we're good to go. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you on Repair-a-thon number five.